Welcome to week three of our Lifehouse One Mission series. We are so glad that you're joining with us today. I am so encouraged, or I was so encouraged by the message that Phil Strawn brought last week. Not only was it a thrill for C and I personally, as uh, Phil delivered that message from inside the new Lifehouse Moree building, which is getting so close to being ready that when COVID restrictions finish, I'm so excited for the church that's going to be gathering there. Not only was that exciting, but the message he delivered, as we go. What a prophetic word to speak about, not only the church in Moree, but this is our mandate as life, as Lifehouse Church. We are an as you go church. Taken straight from Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 and 18 to 20, the mission that God gives us through Jesus. He says, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth, therefore go and make disciples. Or as Phil brought out, as you go, whatever your life consists of, wherever you're going, whatever you're doing, as you go, take the message of life and hope with you so that others may also receive it. You know, Lifehouse, we have been given a specific purpose for being on this earth. Today, as we step into week three of uh, this series, I want to dig deeper into that and how it relates to the mission that we've been given. In week one of this series, I uh, reminded us that our personal motivation for mission is directly connected to our personal revelation of the grace that God has given to each one of us. The more that we are personally aware of what God has saved us from, the more excited we become about what God has saved us for. When we know what he saved us from, we are eager to know, well, what has he saved us for? What is this mission? The more we cherish what God has done for us, the joy he's given us, the life he's given us, the hope and the peace, and you can just go on to continue to list the things that he's given us. The more you personally know it, the more you want others to discover it for themselves. Today, we're going to move from this being the source of our motivation and we're going to talk about the way we bring it to application because we don't just want to be people who are stirred in our hearts about something. We want to be people of action. We don't just want to be people uh, of purpose that's internal. We want to be people who are applying that purpose with the life that we have been given. So let me ask you this question as we begin to dig a bit deeper. How does our society measure value? When you walk down the aisle of the grocery store that you go to, how is each item in that store valued? Or maybe as you're flicking through uh, the, the, the property or looking through property, uh, how, how is each property that's listed, how is it valued? Or maybe my favourite. You've, you've opened up the trading post and you're looking at each item that someone has listed. How is the value determined? See, we live in a society where so much of value is directly connected to a price tag. So that when you're in the trading post and you see that someone is selling jousting sticks or an overhead projector and clearly they're asking way too much, you can say, tell him he's dreaming. We've all been there. See, we live in a society, as I said, that we just, we just have that direct connection between value and a price tag so that we will trade what is valuable to us for something that uh, we also see value in. That's how our society works. But the accurate measure of value can never be determined by a price tag that someone puts on something. You see, a more accurate measure of value is found a different way. When I uh, was selling my first ever vehicle, a Datsun 200B station wagon, I don't even know if these vehicles still exist. Mine barely did. 
Anyway, it was my first car. And if you've got any connection to a first car, you know it means something to you. Uh, it, this is over 20 years ago for me, but it was, it was special and it meant something and I really loved it. But eventually it came time where I was you know, going to purchase an, another car. So I, I had to sell my Datsun 200B, but because of my love and affection for this vehicle, I saw great value in it. So I put a price on the vehicle that I wanted someone else to pay for it that I saw as what it was worth. Well, I put that in the, uh, in the newspaper. That's what you did 20 years ago. There was no online option. So I put it on the newspaper and, and I waited on Saturday morning for people to call and the people to line up to come and see this beautiful specimen of a car that was mine. Do you know, on that day, I did not get one phone call. Nobody, nobody rung, nobody inquired, nothing. That was before I had a mobile phone. So I actually had to sit at home and wait. I waited on Saturday morning for the call, not one. I had to come to this place where I had to realise, well, maybe others don't see the same value in my car as I do. So maybe I have to reduce my asking price, which was reducing the value, and that hurt my heart, but I did. Friends, I want you to know this morning, I had to reduce the cost that I put on that vehicle three times before one person called. Ouch. Eventually, when one person called, they came around, they had a look, they didn't even give me what I was asking. They made a lower offer, which I reluctantly accepted and farewelled my Datsun 200B station wagon. Here's the lesson that we take from that experience. Value can never be determined by the price tag that is placed on something. Value in a much more real way, is defined by what someone is willing to pay for something. It didn't matter what I thought my car was worth. It didn't matter what my affection towards it was. The value of my car in the end was determined by what someone was willing to pay for it. With this logic, let's just ask this question of ourselves this morning. How do we measure the value of salvation. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 18 and 19 says this, For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And the ransom he paid, I love this, was not mere gold and silver, like as if you could compare it to gold and silver, as if there could ever be a monetary price tag on it. Friends, it was not mere gold and silver. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. You know, to truly understand the value of salvation, we don't actually measure it. Now, now this might sound contradictory to what I've already brought up, but we're, gonna, we're going deeper this morning, today, and that's to understand this. To understand the full value of salvation, we don't measure it by what it means to us personally as much as we measure it by what was paid in order that we may receive it. And that cost, friends, goes far beyond any, far beyond any comprehension our minds will ever have. It goes far beyond anything that we will ever truly be able to understand. The reason why this is so important is because the more we know what was paid for us, the more our response moves from simply gratitude, that's a great starting point, but it actually moves us. When we understand, hey, I get it, what was paid for me, it moves me from gratitude to actually having a life where I'm living wholeheartedly for the purpose that God has placed me on this earth. It moves me from a, from a place where I'm grateful, which I never want to leave, but I actually want to, I don't just want to stand here and bask in the wonder of what salvation has done for me, understanding the price that was paid helps me move on the mission of the one who paid that price. When you know what was paid for you, 
it actually becomes easier for you to say, my life is not my own. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Friends, when we get this, when this goes deep into our hearts, when we get what he has done for us, our worship becomes more than a song. Our worship, does, we, we don't stop worshiping in song. It just, it just takes another step on from that and it becomes an attitude of our entire life. We look at the mission that he's given us and we see a direct connection between what he's done for us and how we live that out on a daily basis. I love the way uh, the Apostle Paul wrote, and I'm going to read from the Passion Translation, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. It says this, My old identity has been co-crucified with Messiah and no longer lives. For the nails of his cross crucified me with him and now the essence of this new life is no longer mine. For the anointed one, he lives his life through me. We live in union as one. My new life is empowered by the faith of the Son of God who loves me so much that he gave his, himself for me and dispenses his life into mine. It's no longer I who live, it's Christ who lives in me. And if Christ was sent with a mission, then friends, if he's living in me, I'm sent with a mission too. The more we know what Jesus gave to purchase our salvation, the more it becomes our core motivator for getting on mission so that others might experience it also. This is what enables us to passionately pray, which we've spent time doing in a 24-7 in a week. It's just so special. This is what enables us to eagerly go in every space that God has allowed us to be a part of. And today, our focus, this is what enables us to freely give so that the gospel can reach far beyond the spaces and places that we ourselves are able to go. You know, I know that this is an area that as soon as you start talking about giving financially, it, 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 brings, it enters a space in, of tension for some people. And so I want to uh, just briefly talk about that this morning because Christ never came so that in this space you would live in tension. He came so that in the space of finance, you would live in freedom. And so I want to encourage you this morning in, in how moving on the mission that God has given you, giving into the mission that God has given you is actually directly connected to living in freedom in this space of your life. You know, when my children were little, I constantly found myself, uh, unwittingly, not, not purposely, I constantly found myself worried about them. If we're at the beach, that's supposed to be a fun time. I'm, I'm at the beach and I'm worried about their safety. When we're at the park, I'm worried about their safety. When they're having a, a, a friend over or they're with a friend, I'm worried about their safety. And I, I began to realize, hey, this parenting thing, I thought it was supposed to be a bit more joyful than this. I thought there was. I thought you were supposed to love this time, and 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 I came to this point where I just said, I, I actually I don't want to live this way. So I went and spoke to my mum. She raised five children. Four of those were born in India, and I just assumed, hey, mum, if you brought us up in a space, you know, that uh, by safety standards, if you've been to India, are, are, are a lot less stringent than in Australia. Uh, how did you leave, mum? How did you live not constantly worried about us? For instance, one day, my sister fell out of a moving auto rickshaw. Okay? An auto rickshaw. It's like a, a little scooter with a pretend house around it. it it's not the same as Australia. I'm thinking, Mum, how did you survive with, without like, just constantly being so fearful about what would happen to us as kids? I love my mum's response. She said... The way I was able to live free in raising you kids is that in my heart I knew that you weren't mine. Now, pause for a moment, because when I first heard that, that was a shock. I beg your pardon, Mum? 
What, what my mum was saying is this. When each of us were born, she took a moment with God where she said, I thank you, God, for this life that you've given to me. But I realise this life that you've given to me, it's not mine. This child, I'll speak about myself, he's yours. So I will raise him in the best way that I can. I will raise him in the way that you've instructed him to. But God, you're the one that's going to carry the burden. You're the one that's going to carry the weight of the burden for his future, his destiny. You're the one that's going to give. I will steward the role that you have given me because I am giving you the responsibility of leading him in the future that you have for him. Friends, I call this space that we're talking about the gap. The gap between your ability and your responsibility. It's a brilliant space. And we all know in some space in life what I'm talking about. Many of us know it in our finances. Where our ability to achieve all that we uh, are responsible for ends and the responsibility that, we're, that we have continues. And there's a gap there. My ability takes me this far, but my responsibility is way out there, friends. There's a gap. You know, there's, a, there's a, one of my favorite pictures. I'm going to bring this into land with this, this story. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is the, the feeding of the 5,000. It's called, as we know, men, uh, women and children. There was many more than that. But there's this young fellow that uh, comes to Jesus and the disciples bring him along. They say, here, we've got this boy and he's got five loaves and two fish. I love this moment because here we see a gap, a significant one, a whole uh, countryside, a whole uh, side of the hill, a, a whole hoop, a whole hoop, a whole heap of people who are hungry, and a young fella who's got a little bit of ability. And he walks up to Jesus and he says, "I don't carry what's necessary to carry." in order to fulfill the responsibility of feeding these people. But I'll bring what little ability that I have and I'll place it into your hands. Here's the gap. When we enter the gap, it becomes one of the most faith-fulfilling, life-giving, soul-enriching, freedom sources that you can ever experience. Friends, many of us are trying to fulfill all that we're responsible for without letting God into the gap. When you commit yourself to stay on mission, including through your financial giving, you are inviting God into your gap. You are saying, I will continue to place the, the fullness of my ability into your hands so that you might fulfill all the responsibility that I have. Philippians 4.19, Paul says, the same God who is uh, paraphrased in my, my words, the same God who has looked after all of my needs, He's going to look after yours as well. The same God that I have lent on as my responsibility has gone far beyond my own ability. He's the same God that's going to meet you in that gap as well. Friends, can I encourage you? If you want to experience a miracle in your own life, keep engaging in the mission. Keep putting yourself in a, in a position where God must come through to close that gap. It is an enriching way to live. It's a freeing way to live. It takes the burden off our backs and it places that full responsibility on the one who is able not only to carry it, but as the Bible says, to meet all our needs. As we give today, we're going to do this in a moment together as we give today to our one week for eternity, our, our, our one week for eternity giving and so that the mission can keep going in our own communities and into the nations of the world. I want to encourage you, re remember the value, remember the price, remember your life is not your own. You are God's. And from that place, let's take all that He has given us to steward and point it into the direction that builds the mission. 
Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that you're a God full of grace, love, hope, peace, joy, all of these incredible things that without you, we can't conjure up ourselves. We can't produce these things on our own. They are all a reflection of you and being made in your image and brought to life through the sacrifice Jesus made for us and the infilling of the Holy Spirit that we carry. Lord, I thank you so much for the mission that you have given us. Lord, I ask that we would continue to be a people that would not lose focus on uh, stepping out in this area of finances so that we might continue to see the mission advance through what you have given us to steward in our finances. Lord, our lives are not our own. Our lives are yours. Use them, God, for your glory and to fulfill your mission on this earth. In Jesus' name. For all those that are joining us this morning and you personally in your life, you know, I talked about the gap there. You've been trying to fill that gap yourself. In fact, you would say uh, the gap is never ending because you've got nothing to, to, to bring into that space where this morning I was talking about, hey, you can, you can meet God in that gap. And what I want to say to you this morning or today, whenever you're watching this, is God is in that gap for you right now. The choice is yours to receive Him. The Bible says that the way we do this is we must first renounce the life that we've been living, the life that we've been choosing, any uh, sin. And if you, if you want to know what uh, a good description of sin, it is anything that causes that gap between you and a loving God to increase. That's all it is. It, it, it takes you further and further away from the power that God has to bring about all of those incredible things into your life. The Bible also says that we close that gap in an instant when we turn from those things and we say we repent. The Bible says we turn from those things and we give our life to Him. I'd like to lead you in a prayer this morning. The Bible simply says this is how you begin your journey of discovering just how much God can bring into your life that will transform you. Why don't you say a prayer like this? Say, Jesus, thank you for all that you have done so that I might know the true value that you see in me. Today, I turn away, I repent, I say I'm sorry for all of the actions that I've had in my life that have been lived out of my own desire. I give my life to you today. Jesus, my life is no longer my own. My life is yours. In Jesus' name, amen.